starting your day. <laughs> this uh, handle you see in the picture is fun because with yesterday's 100 degree temperatures and predictions of a hotter day, I had to make a few adaptions. But isn't that what you do in life is that you learn from the Lord that the things around you that he's given, you apply to your life and you adapt to them as any person would when they find themselves standing in the sun, they come into the shade. If they find themselves in the rain, they come in out of the rain. But the one thing we don't do too often is sometimes spiritually we forget that we need to follow the promptings of some of the obvious things that are the same as though you were being rained on or you were being encouraged by the sun to get out of it <laughs> into the shade. And that's like sin. Sometimes when people sin, they tend to run away from the solution than to run to the solver and that would be like standing out in the rain and getting wet winding up with pneumonia something worse than what the original cause was or like standing out in the sun and getting sunburned and if you stayed long enough getting skin cancer and then eventually it killing you that's what sin can do in your life you know the idea in the Old Testament of transgression was the idea of you crossed over God's protection and then once you kept going, or once it began to develop in you, then you caused sin. You participated in transgressing to the thought, meaning the process of making that transgression into sin. And we, if we take our promptings from the beginning, if you see sun, get out of the shade, get into the shade. If it's raining, get in out of the rain. Well, that's what devotionals do for us. They help us to point in the right direction, to go back to the Word, to listen to what God may be saying, to understand His promptings, to walk with Him, to talk with Him. In starting your day right, pamper yourself. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within? Fear not, for I shall yet praise Him. Or... Why are you cast down, O oh, my inner self? And why should you moan over me and be disquieted within? Open God and wait expectantly for him. For I shall yet praise him, my help and my God. Psalm 47, 42, 5. God gave you your emotions, so it doesn't work to ignore them completely. You make a big mistake if you refuse to meet any of your emotional needs. If you are tired, you need rest. If you are stressed, you need some fun. <laughs> if you need encouragement, spend time with someone who knows how to build you up. Don't ignore your emotional needs in the name of Christianity. You are a whole person, body, soul, and spirit. See 1 Thessalonians 5.23. God will show you how to be strong in all areas of your life. You know, I think that's sometimes also what people neglect is that you know, you sometimes get involved in a church that's good for you in one way, but maybe misses out in another way. And so, because it's the latter days, you know, I'm not saying we should, you know, be geniuses or be, you know, super spiritual Christians or super practical Christians, but we can be well grounded and well founded in the Word by recognizing that we are body, soul, and spirit, and that we do need to minister to that need, you know, like coming in out of the sun or recognizing the spiritual needs and recognizing even the body's needs and sometimes even the, the emotional needs. But recognition doesn't mean indulgence. Recognition means that, okay, I feel sad. And it's okay to feel sad because my cat died, my bird died, my dog died, my wife died. 
But knowing that that sadness is temporary is what we do by applying the spiritual aspect of our life to the emotional need of being comforted. So we say, oh, because my wife died and I am sad, I need to be comforted. So you turn to the spiritual side to recognize that it can help you to deal with the emotional need of being comforted. So you call upon the comforter. You put on spiritual music. You talk to a pastor or a counselor. You recognize that in sadness, you could turn that to depression or you could turn that to rejoicing in the Lord because he has come to you and brought the comforter for those times when you are sad. The Lord was sad. The Lord had needs. Jesus, when he was on this life, in this world, on this life, <laughs> on the life, he too had to depend upon the ministry of the Holy Spirit and what he saw his Father doing. You can turn to Jesus anytime you have a need and find that he understands and he will give you the same comfort with which he was comforted then you'll be able to do the same for someone else.